Welcome back to Final Meals of Art, you guys. I'm going to get started on part two of this. Uh, this is thick paper, so I had a hard time getting it dry and it still may be slightly damp. I usually use this, do this on a 180 paper, and this is a 400, so it took quite a bit of drying time and even using a blow dryer. You can see where I had made a pattern out of some... Uh, uh, I was left over a folder and I actually found out it found easier to just draw the body I do the uh, the toes in individually it was a little bit easier that way uh, when you have a lot of appendages like this it's it's very uh, it's, it's it's a lot harder so if you do make one that has appendages like this make sure they're thick enough they're not real thin because uh, it makes it more difficult um, I just wanted to do this. I've done this in many different styles, uh, different shapes before, and I've done demos of this. I decided I wanted to do this gecko. Um, and I placed it on here. After you cut it out, you trace it on here. You place them. You want to open composition. If you will notice, you can see that um, some of them are going off. They're not. They're going off the page, so it looks like it's an open composition. It's not closed. If everything was within, like this, it would be closed. And I wanted the feel of it being uh, open like it's going off the page. I have some crossovers. I might have, I could have put too many on there. It's more difficult. Uh, the bigger your pattern, the better, too. Um, see where I have them over, overlapped in places. And I trace it probably darker than I would because uh, I want for you to be able to see the shapes. I hope you can see them pretty good on here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is show you what I don't want you to do because I try to explain this situation and students always have a hard time grasping that we're going to paint in the negative space in some places and paint the positive space in other places and, and we're going to uh, go back and forth on each one of the shapes. And what I don't want you to do is to paint around a whole shape or to paint just the inside of a shape. So the first thing I'm going to do, so you can get this concept right away, and what not to do is I have two little pl places made specifically that I'm going to paint in the way I don't want you to. Okay, um, it's it's it is a positive negative situation, but that's not the study we're going to do. And what I don't want you to do is paint. I'm going to take it. Say I'm going to make this one maybe orange, or even if I change colors, it's still not doing. What I want to do. Now you've got to know that when you uh, paint in this area, the, the other side has to be dry or it'll bleed. And I've been kind of worried about this one because this paper's not. Um, so I'm painting around the edge of uh, painting the outside of the shape of the of the gecko. And I have students do this every time. They paint just around the outside of it and not skip back and forth. And so what I do is, what you are going to do on this so is get some paint on, clean your brush, and then bleed it out so that it doesn't, so that it softens out and you don't have a hard edge. Okay. That you are going to do the, through the whole thing. But on this one, you see how, um, and I, even if I change colors, it's still, it's not what I want you to do. It's just paint on the inside of the on the outside of the of the shape it will still look good but this is uh, you won't learn the process of, uh, of of this type of study and it will it'll have a different look to it that I'm wanting you to get so even though I'm changing colors I'm still just painting on the outside of the shape of my gecko and by the way, I did a very stylized shape of the gecko, not very realistic because their their uh, feet are a lot thinner than this. And I and I chose a stylized version. And see what I mean about when you have the little the littler appendages, it's uh, more difficult to to paint around things. And I did to get the you can't um, once it's over once it's dry and everything's dry, you can erase out some of your pencil marks. Like I said, I purposely made my pencil marks a little darker so you can see it on the video. Okay, so it still looks good, but it's still not what the assignment is all about, okay? 
I mean, even if I change colors here, and it's going to bleed with that yellow, but that's okay. And so I'm painting around them, even though I did change colors, though. I didn't want to be boring and have it all the same if I'm going to have a part of it a mistake. At least I want a colorful mistake. So, painting around. Now see, if this was wet on the inside, it would bleed inside very badly. I kind of messed up the shape of that toe, but that's a, that's a problem as you get a smaller brush there. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <coughs> okay. And I need to work quickly. Like, I need to fade this out pretty quickly. Wet my brush and fade this out. If you let it, if you don't soften those edges, it dries into a separate shape. And you don't want to have another shape on there. The only shape you want is your gecko. Or whatever shape you decide to do. So see how I'm softening it so it doesn't have another, a hard edge. I almost lost it there. Let it dry too quick. <coughs> Put a little bit more on there and spread it out. I'm using the wrong green. There we go. Still the wrong green, but it still works. Now I'm going to let it soften out. And I cleaned my brush and softened it out so there's not a hard edge, okay? So around this one, I'm going to use another color. What should I use? You know, green and yellow orange there and <coughs> you can use any colors, <coughs> excuse me, you guys, that you want to. It's up to you. I like to make these very colorful, personally, because you know me, I love color. And this is a very contemporary-looking piece when you get done. Uh, and most of the time, if you spend, if you, you can, these are very, uh, very neat pieces to frame up. People, they, they're very beautiful framed up and make uh, really cool contemporary feel art pieces. So I'm cleaning my brush, I'm gonna soften it out. So I get into a smaller area, I need to use a smaller brush or a, a brush that I can turn on its edge, like this one I can turn on the edge and get a, a pretty soft, get into the little corners pretty good. Okay, Sears, so put blue on this side, maybe. I just felt like I've never done this before to right off the bat to show what not to do, but I figure maybe if I show you right away what I don't want you to do, it'll, it'll, it'll avoid happening like most of the time it happens. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I think it's just allergies. I hope I'm not getting any kind of crud. Okay. And then again. So, see, it does look, it's, I can say it doesn't look bad. It's just not what <coughs> the assignment is about. And it doesn't, you won't learn what I want you to out of it. I lost that toe. We'll just paint it out. He'll have four on that one. Okay. There we go. And I'm painting around it. And so, see, this is what not to do. I don't want you just to paint around a shape. I think I'll just put some green on this side. Just because, why not? I like the colors. See, it's very colorful. And it's not, there's, it doesn't look ugly. It just doesn't, it's not the assignment. Now, I'm going to have to let this dry a little bit before I paint on this side. See, here, I didn't. You need to do this while it's wet, because see how it's already sitting? I should have bleed that, that out while it was still... Um, the paper you're using, I think, is um, work better. Um, it'll bleed easier. Um, that dries fast. This seems to be drying a little fast. Not too bad. Uh, a hot press paper will dry faster you have to really work fast with a hot press cold press doesn't as much this is just a heavy paper but it's what i had at my house i have my other tablets like i use when i teach y'all at school um or i didn't bring them home i had plenty of paints but not 
not the same kind of paper. It has some small ones, but not big enough for this. So I have to be careful not to get into this other gecko. And I can't work on that to show you what I don't want you to do until this is dry, because if I do this, here's what you don't want to do either, is let that dry too quick where you have a hard shape. If you do, you can get a brush and kind of scrub it and spread it out as best you can. Okay. So I guess it's a good thing that you learned that right away too. See, I'm softening the edges out so that my negative space is still basically, even when there's paint on it, I still call this unpainted, even though there's a little bit on there because I softened it out so much. <clears throat> now, I'm going to, if I'm going to show you this, I'm going to have to dry it quickly. So, because I can't paint here. If I paint here while this is wet, it'll bleed. Uh, it will bleed into it. So I have to make sure it's dry. if I'm working instead of taking the time to dry it like that I just work over in another place until it dries and then you know skip around if you got you like if you get stuck and can't work somewhere just scoot over somewhere where it's dry to work um, but I wanted to go ahead and show you this example and get it uh, done so here I let that dry into another shape and but I will have to fix it later that's another mistake I make that you don't want to make okay so on this one, is what I don't want you to do is paint just the inside. Even if I change colors, so you had to make sure this was dry or it would bleed over into the other side. That's why I had to dry it. I hope I got it good and dry because it will bleed if I don't. So, painting just, see what I mean? If you get bigger shapes that don't have a lot of tiny, smaller, appendages it's not as hard i lost that toe i'm gonna put it back in see it's very this is a very stylized gecko i do what my grandson has a gecko and i got my basic shape from his i took a picture of his but i didn't want the little tiny skinny fingers for this and so i looked online and, and this is how they do the 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 stylized ones, they make them with the little big fat chubby fingers like that. So I chose to kind of go that way also. So see how I'm just, <clears throat> on this one, I'm just painting the inside of it. And that is not what I want y'all to do. I'm gonna do it quickly so we can get on. Okay, got a little bit too other color in here. I wanna get other colors that I want to at least be the same color. So you, <clears throat> I'm going to paint it, let it bleed with that orange and make a yellow orange. Because I don't want it to look ugly. See how, see how now, uh, this is a mistake I don't want you to do? If I don't soften it good, it makes another shape. Do you see that? <clears throat> Later when it's dry, I'll correct, I'll do something so that won't look so obvious. But, um, so it's really good right off the bat. You can see uh, the mistakes you can make that you don't want to make. I think it's a... A good I'm glad I decided to do it this way so you can look down this corner and think okay that's what Miss Sangster does not want me to do we'll do some green over here let it bleed into some yellow green maybe I still want it to look pretty even though if I'm not doing the correct method <clears throat> that's why I have to fix that other side Okay. And see, so you can wet that, and um, that's what I usually want you to do, but um, uh, it's show you how I'm gonna wet it before I drop the paint into it. But when I'm showing you this wrong way to do it, I didn't wanna do it that way. I'm just gonna paint it, because this is what usually happens. They just paint it and not. Okay. Okay, so we got the bottom left. This side, what not to do. 
remember. Okay. And I'm going to soften this and blend this together. The green and the orange will neutralize each other. They're compliments and they, they, they neutralize. Okay. <clears throat> when you add two complement colors, they neutralize. Anyway, what you ought to do, don't paint just the inside of your shape. Don't paint just around the outside of it. Now I'm going to show you what I do want you to do. This is, this is dry up in here so I can work here. So what I'm going to do, you're going to paint back and forth from the negative space and then in the positive space. So on this side, I'm going to paint, I'm going to wet. This is what the technique you use. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to put water farther than I really want paint to be so I can soften the edges out. Like I said, we don't want to have hard edges. So I'm putting more water just in the shape in here where I'm wanting to paint, but more than where I really want to paint just so that I get those softer edges. Now I'm going to take, and it's dry on this side of the border. If you got borders, there's got to be paint on one side or the other, okay? So I'm going to take, um, oh, maybe this time I'm going to get some red. And see what happens. I can, this is wet. Look what happens. I drop the wet, the wet paint into the wet. This is painting wet on wet. It starts, see how it just, it bleeds out and runs. Well, I kind of want that softness because I want it to get soft. Now, see, I didn't paint on this side. This is the tail of the other gecko. I don't want to, I, when I paint in there, I'm either going to leave it unpainted or I'm going to paint it a different color. So see, uh, <clears throat> I dropped in the paint there. Now I'm going to clean my brush out of, the, out of the paint and just soften this edge out so it softens into nothing. See, I don't have another shape because it's a muted softness. Now I think, well, maybe I want this a little brighter. It's just a little too muted for my taste. So I'm going to put a little bit more color in there. How about that? I want these bright. I have more muted background. And see, uh, this is one thing you're learning about this. If you've never painted in, in uh, watercolor, you're learning the properties of watercolor. See, even though I've painted here, do you see how the, the my background action painting is still going to co come through because watercolor is transparent? And I uh, usually have these a little bit darker. This is more muted, but whether it's darker or muted, it doesn't matter. But see, these other colors will kind of pop through. So here I painted. Now I'm going to leave this. And I won't, can't paint anywhere around here until this is dry. So I'm going to skip over to something else. And say maybe um, on I painted the, the positive shape of the gecko here. And I left the negative space unpainted. So now on this side, it, see how it's faded out to where the positive area has not been painted? And then the negative paint area is not painted also. I've got to do one or the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, paint the negative side of the gecko in, in the negative space and leave the positive image of the gecko in here uh, unpainted. And then see how it bleeds over to here. So you're going to have both situations going. I think I'm going to get a different color. Um, just because, let's see, what color should I use? I haven't done blue yet. In there. So I'm going to paint in the negative space. Oop, I forgot to wet it. I'll just get another brush real quick. I'm going to wet that. Uh, um, I love a a um, angular brush because see look how I can use the tip of that angular brush to follow the edge of the gecko and not get the inside I don't want to get the inside of the gecko wet because it'll bleed over there I'm just going to bleed wet the, the negative space okay if I didn't let that water bleed over there I might let it got too close hope I'm not going to make a mistake right off the bat if this is wet it's too close. I'm not going to paint there. I'm going to let this dry, okay? Because I got this where I bled this over a little bit. It's too close to that border. It's not quite all the way there, but it's close enough. I don't want to take a chance because it will bleed over into that. So I'm going to skip over to here, and I'll paint in the, leave the positive space of the gecko unpainted and paint the negative. Do the same situation, but a little bit opposite, okay? So I'm going to 
do like I did while over there, and I'm gonna wet. Oop, I didn't clean my brush good. Make sure you clean your brush good before you dip it in. Okay. And I'm gonna wet it. I'm gonna put blue in there anyway, so. And now, now this over here where that his foot is, I'm not gonna get it wet because I don't want the paint to go over into there. I just wanna go it around where his head is. Okay, and I'm gonna let that soften out. Now I'm gonna put some blue paint in there. And when I drop it into it, now look at how it will not cross over because I didn't wet where the head is. It's not crossing over there. It's just gonna go there. So I'm gonna clean my brush and soften this blue paint out but I'm just gonna make sure I don't get it into the, any of the shapes of the other, the surrounding ones and letting it soften out. Now you want, you don't want to, uh, to soften it so much that you look like you have them outlined. Okay, you want it to, you want it to soften gradually, okay? Because I don't want them to look like you just have a halo around them. I had one student do that one year, just they, they soften it too quick and then it looked like a halo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that, soften that clear to the inside of this next gecko. So he will be pretty much painted up to it. Okay. And there we go. And see how the other shapes are staying there where they're supposed to be. Okay, so I'm gonna bring some of this around the tip of the nose, I think. There we go. Okay, so there it is. So when this dries, I, I'm going to paint more, but this is wet right here still, so I don't wanna paint over here. Yeah, I got it wet in there. I don't think I want to blend in that blue. I could bring it all the way down here. It's up to you. I think I will since it's already wet. But it would be a good place to change the situation. And just painting in the negative space on the outside of this gecko. Okay. So I'm painting in the negative space. Okay, now I'm gonna to have to let this dry before I work some more in there. Um, let's see, D D D D. Sometimes you have to go back and forth. It, it, there's not a, either one is a, a, um, you can do, but I want to let this dry, so I'm gonna skip and work somewhere else just so I can let this dry here. Let's see. I'll work down in here. Uh, this would be. I think this is dry enough here. I painted the negative, the positive space is painted here, and the negative is unpainted. So I think, leave this unpainted. I'm going to leave the negative, the positive space of the tail on this side um, unpainted, and paint the positive and let it bleed out to nothing to where it's unpainted here. Even though it's soft, it's basically gonna be unpainted. So I think I'll do a cool color. <laughs> it kind of just what's around it, I kind of decide what to put around it, depending what's, you know, like surrounding it. I wanna go with something different. Got some purple there. Maybe it's a good place for, um, I wish I had my other palette. Oh, I think I'll do this Thalo. Oh, I haven't done Thalo yet. I love this color. Why not? Why not? It's kind of a, it's between blue and green and I'm gonna use that. Okay, cause I had, so I'm going to, oops, I forgot to wet it. I need to wet it before I get my paint. So I'm going to, follow this tail around here and wet just the negative space a little bit ways out. But I don't want to get too close to that yellow because I don't want it to, I want it to fade out to nothing on this side. So I'm just going to wet enough to get it there and I'm going to put this phthalo in here and on this side of the tail I'm going to have it 
I'm going to have the tail, the positive area of the tail is unpainted, and I'm painting into the negative space. And I'm going to soften it out to where it goes to almost nothing. So I want to keep it, the look of that, since it's painted there, I want it to be more unpainted looking around it. See, even though there's a little bit there, there's not much there. And I got this line softened. See how it gets darker towards this and lighter towards this other one. Okay, so see, this is what I mean when I told you guys you couldn't just whip this out. You have to stop and think about what you're doing and stuff. So, there that is. So, since I painted, um, <clears throat> I can paint here, but I got to be careful not to get to, to this wet side. So, what I'm going to do is since I left the, the, the positive shape of the tail unpainted here what I'm going to do over here is paint this edge of the inside of the positive edge of the tail on this side I'm going to paint it but leave it unpainted over here so see it's harder to do when you got these smaller appendage things if you got bigger things it's 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 a lot it's not as difficult so I want to do the opposition color I got a cool color there I think I'm going to go more toward uh, a warm color on this other side. So, um, I, my bad, I keep forgetting to put my water down first. Now I'm, got, I'm gonna put very much water here because it's a tiny space. So I'm just gonna kinda do the edge. This is when it's gonna be, the edges will be um, very close and it's gonna be hard to get to fade out to nothing on the other side because of the smallest of it. It can be done, it's just more difficult. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. I want more red, orange than red. I meant than orange, orange. So I'm going to paint this side of the tail. But I'm not going to cross over where that foot is. You see where the foot of this gecko is, is intersected with this one. And anytime you have an intersection, there's got to be something happen there. Okay? So... I want it, I want to fade that out. Ooh, that's going to be touch and go here. That's a close edge. Okay. And I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to soften this side to fade out toward this other side. I don't want to go all the way to the edge because I, I don't want it to bleed either. So see, it's pretty soft. Even though it looks like it's painted, it's very pale up to this edge. And if it's very wet, it'll... This is going to have almost the halo effect because it's so tiny. But see here that the positive, uh, the negative space is painted. It's unfaded painted here because I just faded it out to there. But then it's painted on this side. It's back and forth. So this side of the negative space, since I painted in the positive space here, I'm going to leave the negative space on this side unpainted. Okay. I didn't get very many splotches down in there either. Um, see if this is dry, not quite, okay, it's pretty dry though, but when this gets dry, what I'm going to do, um, I think I'm going to leave this, well, i got to think about it, what I want to do, sometimes if you got too many intersections, uh, it's, and, and you'll have a place where the positive area is painted and the negative area is painted, you have another area that needs to be, to define the edge, sometimes it's just changing colors, okay, so I'm gonna soften this a little bit more here. I'm gonna soften that edge. This one, I don't know if I can let it dry too quick, okay? You wanna soften the edges while they're wet. Okay, so let's see if this is dry. Okay, it is. Um, I got the positive area on both sides of this tail are painted red. So I'm going to leave uh, the, the positive areas painted on the body and then the tail. I think on this, in the negative space, I will paint in the negative space and leave the positive area unpainted, okay? So I'm going back and forth. See, there's a lot of thought to this. You have to, you can't just whip it out. You got to think about it. Okay, I don't want to cross over with those border lines, you know. You don't want to cross over any border lines with your water. And I'm, I'm bleeding it out a little bit farther than I want. I did two cool colors, uh, hot colors there. 
So I'm going to do a cool color there. And I don't want to go into the phthalo again because I've already done that. I want I just want this to be bright, a lot of change of color and stuff. So I think I'll, I think I'll go with um, I think a blue. There's quite a bit of purple there, not the phthalo. But so see, I've got that wet. So look what I drop the wet paint into the wet paper, and it already starts softening out. Okay. Oop, there's little toes there. I'm going to go in between the toes because I have to define if there's an area that's got a border, it has to be whatever's on the other side has to have something, a treatment to it. Either not painted or painted or another color. So while it's still wet, I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to soften this edge and soften it out to where it bleeds out to nothing. But I don't want to... If I if it looks like it's a halo around him, I'll add more color because I don't want that halo effect either. Kind of looks like a shadow underneath him. Really looks pretty good. But I'm gonna put a little bit more color there. So these are very fun, colorful pieces. They look very pretty. They look beautiful framed up, and you know, put them in a contemporary frame. People that likes contemporary art would like this, or people that likes the. Uh, you know, the geckos, that's a new thing right now, too, that people are liking. But there you go. Let's see the net, the positive space is unpainted here. The negative space is painted. Okay. And when this gets dry, I'll do the opposite there. <clears throat> so maybe on this side, let's see, you can do either or. Like, uh, if I want to leave this unpainted, I could just later paint this a different color. It, but it has to be either done. Either this needs to be left unpainted or painted a different color anytime you cross a, a, an intersection. Um, one of the two, leave it unpainted or in a different color. So I thought since um, since I this leg, it's been painted on the inside here, I thought about uh, painting part of it. I'm just going to paint part of the leg on the positive side. I'm not going to paint it here, but I'm just going to go over here and paint part of the toes and part of that leg and let it soften out. I think it's a good time for a warm color. Let's see. I think I'll put orange against that blue. I think that'll look good. So what I'm doing is see how I'm going to paint the toes on this side, have to use what brush you need. Don't use the wrong brush and let it do, you know, uh, to help you. Don't use odd shaped brushes. I'm using a smaller one because I got a tiny spot to get into. So I clean my brush. Now I'm going to soften it to the other side. So this is basically just soften color. It's not going to paint all the way. See, uh, I would like it faded out more, but that little appendages are so tiny, it's not doing it very well. I, and I better not paint into there yet because it might bleed. So I don't have the, because it's so tiny, I don't have this graded change like I do here as much. So we'll leave it for now. Okay. But it still look good. Okay. Um, back and forth. Let's see. I want to soften this edge. I don't want another edge here, so I'm going to wet my brush. Sometimes if it doesn't come up all the way, uh, this is a soft brush. It gets you a, a stiff brush, and you can scrub that paint and soften it. And I'll paint that toe after everything's dry, I think. Yeah. So it still softens to nothing there. Uh, this is wet, so I'm not going to, next to it, so I'm not going to worry about anything there yet because it's wet here. Um... Still wet there, but I think if it bled a little bit into that, it wouldn't hurt. Let me think what I want to do. That negative spice is not going to think about it, what I want to do. So I want this to good, be good and dry anyway. Okay, um, I'm going to have to fix this or it's going to bug me. So I am going to... Um... I'm going to leave the foot unpainted here and paint the negative space so I can soften this edge. Okay. Uh, I might try. I don't have a scrubby brush in here with me. I need to go in my other room and get one. Let me 
you see, these are two. This one might, it's still wet. I meant dry, so it's got enough. No, you don't. Always have a sponge or something to dry your brush on if you need to. Okay, so see how I'm softening this edge up. Hopefully, I can scrub it out. Sometimes you can't. It might be later. I just need to put some color into it after it's good and dry around it. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. So, see, you learn some mistakes not to do right off the bat what to watch for. Okay? Um, mm -hmm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and wet that. Maybe that will help correct this, too. And I'm going to wet. See, I'm going to use this. This flat edge of my brush to get up to the edge of that leg. I'm just letting it work for me. That's why I like an angular brush. You can see how I'm good. I'm not getting the positive shape wet, just the negative. Okay. And I think we need another color in there. Oh, what did he do? This might be a good place for Thalo. Because I got a reddish and a blue there. But to fix that mistake, I might need to stay with purple so that it will fix where we made the mistake. Usually there's always something you can do to fix things. But right off the bat, like I said, you could learn some things what not to do. So I'm going to paint on the outside. See where it's, it's bleeding where I got it wet, but it's not crossing over to, uh, the, to the positive shape of the gecko because I left it dry. But this one particularly hardens really quick, so I'm going to blade it quick. There we go. There. And see if I can come over here and soften it to here and make this all look more cohesive. And I'm going to let it fade out here. And I'm going to put a little bit more in there to see what we can do to correct this boo-boo here. We're just going to look. And there we go. And since it's not wet around the nose, if it was wet there, it would bleed really bad. So we don't want that to happen. So there I'm correcting that, that spot. It's a lot brighter. And since I'm making it very more saturated in color, I will need to add some more to repeat that elsewhere in the, in the painting so that it has some unity. And I think maybe I did paint too quick around the nose. This paper dries slower. I got to remember that. I won't use this heavy of a paper on this project again. It's because it makes it a pain for it to wait so long. See, that's the reason why you don't want it. You want to see, I thought it was dry enough. It wasn't showing you right off the bat what not to do. See that little bit of bleeding in there? It'll soften out and be okay, though. And I'm going to soften this edge out so that it softens. And I'm just going to keep my wet brush and just bring it on over so it gets it, it helps it be cohesive, okay? Oh, I'm going to have to put some more brighter colors like that and deep, darker shades to repeat it so it won't be too foreign. It, it's all right. It'll pull your eye in here. I just don't want it to be foreign to it. Let's see. Skip around. That's why I say just go ahead and skip around if you need to. So anyway, since I painted the whole thing here, I'm going to leave this unpainted. And leave it unpainted here, but I can paint it from here out. Where I can do the opposite here. Let's see. What do I want to do? I'm going to leave it unpainted here against this. So that means if I do that, I want to paint the positive area. If I'm going to leave this unpainted, I'm going to paint the positive area here. So I'm going to wet my brush. Wet and get the paper wet around in that area. Okay, a little bit more than I usually do. And I think it's time for, i got lots of colors. What do I want to put in there? Oh, a yellow. I think it's time for a yellow. It'll repeat, be close to that other one. So I'm gonna drop in and see the yellow doesn't go to where it's dry. It only paints where it's yellow. I mean, where it's uh, wet. Putting the painting where it's wet. 
And I gotta be careful. See, this is also where the, the border of the tail is. So what I'm gonna do to keep that, I'm gonna paint just this, this part of the gecko. But I gotta leave that side because it's not only his foot, but it's also the tail. They cross over there. So I have to be careful. <clears throat> I'm gonna let it soften out this way. And let it soften. It's just gonna, it's already given some unity to it for repeating those yellows. Anytime you repeat a color, it's the easiest way. I'll let it soften out and soften out. There we go. Leave it soft for now. Let it dry. Okay. Um, go back and forth. You can see what's going on. When I could dry paint the toes here. I think it's dry enough there. Since I'm leaving this unpainted, I'm going to paint in. Uh, I'm going to paint the toes on this side because I got the positive shape of the toes unpainted here, so I'm gonna paint them on this side. So I'm going back and forth. I'm not doing them all like this or all like this, but a little bit of both on these. You have to think about it, and I guarantee when you get through doing this, you're gonna eat and you're gonna just be breathing negative space, positive space. It'll be so uh, ingrained in you. I see, what color do we want in there? I'm painting that. I think I'm going to do a go back to the stalo for the inside there. So I'm going to paint. I didn't wet it. I have to work quick. If I, if you don't wet it first, you need to get your color in and bleed it very quickly so that it doesn't make that hard line. Because I want it to soften. This is where I said the little appendages get kind of the pits because they're tiny. So I'm going to soften it to nothing on the other side. Okay. Because I got it unpainted there. So I'm going to paint, put a little bit more color in. I want some more of those richer colors too. Okay. Losing this toe shape. And I'm going to soften it so that. It goes over here where the toes are with this other that's unpainted. It'll soften out. I really like putting some of that rich. I'm going to repeat that in here. Uh, um, more and I'm going to make this kind of the theme of the piece of some of those real rich, rich tones. I like that. It's going to make it pop. I need to get me a rag to wipe my brush. I didn't get one. I got a sponge, but I need a rag too. I can't hardly paint without a rag in my hand, and I'm sitting here doing it in my fingers instead of a rag because I'm so used to wiping the brush when I want to. Okay. So I'm going to keep that work very softly. I'm going to wet my brush again. I can't get into that wet area. It's got to be dry. Okay. Now I'm going to do something with this because... This is where that transition is, where I made the mistake. So I will probably let it dry and I'll think about it. I could just soften this edge. Oh, to see. I left very little. It should have been unpainted. No, that's the inside, so that's good. I'm gonna soften it for now, then I'll think about it later. See that, but see how my background colors are still showing through? They bleed the, the there's your red. That's what I did my Jackson Pollock stuff. It's still showing through. I probably should have made it darker, but I think I'm gonna have enough to, uh, the, of the brighter colors on top that this will just give a subtle pattern in the background, and I think that will work nicely. Okay, this is dry and this is dry. So here's a choice I could do, either or. I could paint. Um, I could paint here just a different color and leave this unpainted and soft and fading out. And I might do that in part of this here. Okay, I think I will. What do I want to paint? Uh, maybe just part of it. Because I'm going to go back and forth, obviously. So I'm going to do... <laughs> what color do we should we put there? Got yellows and blues, purples and greens. It's been a good, 
while since I've had some of that green and I have that close enough. Maybe mix a little bit of that phthalo with it. I'm just going to do part of this unpainted. There I did. I didn't wet it first like I said you're supposed to. There we go. I'm going to paint the positive. So see, even though I'm still painting the positive space, I changed colors. I didn't stay with the same color. And I'm going to leave it like that, unpainted there. See, I'm going to leave the elbow unpainted. Maybe part of it. I'll bring some of that up. There we go. Soften it. And there we go. we got the complement colors mixing again here. They'll gray down. But it kind of adds interest, see? Never too, never, none of there's never be, ever be too light. So I'm going to soften this edge. And then I think when I paint over here, I'm going to leave this unpainted and I'm going to paint the negative here after this is dry. But see how this is really starting to really show up. Okay, um, see here, I got to do either or, either change colors. I'll think about it when it's dry, but this is a situation where you have a lot of, uh, you know, it go, goes back and forth. The negative space is unpainted. I mean, painted, and then the positive space is unpainted. But then the negative space is unpainted here also. So what I'm going to do is paint the positive space of the tail here and let it fade out to nothing here where it's painted on the opposite side. So I'm going to leave the positive area in here unpainted just faded out to it and your heaviest paint here so you go the, the back and forth and what color I think maybe it's time to put in I think if I put that yellow in it'll counterbalance the yellow there I think that would be interesting so I, I'm gonna pay attention to what I'm doing I didn't wet it soften it Clean my brush. I don't want to mix with that blue and turn it green. I just want it to soften to nothing on this other side of the tail. So where it's very pale and it still looks like it's almost unpainted against this as far as value goes. Okay. I hope you're getting this. Um, with the video, you can watch it back and forth, back and forth through and, and, and see what I did. Uh, here's a situation where you got the tail crossing over into here and but then his body's crossing here There's lots of stuff. It starts getting confusing. That's where you end up having to change colors and stuff So I'm going to leave the inside of this unpainted and then it's unpainted It's painted on the pause of the, on the side of the lizard here this lizard So what I'm going to do is leave it Softened here and just paint on this edge and soften it to nothing there and I think it's another good time for a good another phthalo again. I love it, the color. And I'm not going to wet too much because this is a tiny spot and I don't want to get too much. See, there's the border for the other tail there, so I have to define that. Okay? Because there's his body. So I'm going to do that edge and then I'm going to fade it on this other side to nothing because it's this negative space is, is, is painted on this other side, the positive place is. So this is where sometimes you have to just change colors and soften to, to get it. So see, both of them are showing up. The tail's showing up for this one, but yet uh, you can tell because of this border, it's part of this gecko too. Okay, I think I hope y'all are getting this. So, okay. And I think that will be it. I'm going to let y'all, I think this is enough for y'all to get started. And I'll try to work on it some more and show you what it looks like more finished. Give me a call if you have any questions or if you don't understand it at all. Let me know. And, uh, and I will talk to you tomorrow. And hope, good luck on doing this. Don't be afraid of your colors. And... You can use any color you want or as many or as few as you want. I'll talk to you tomorrow.